The Tampa Bay Buccaneers have officially named Dirk Cutter as their new offensive coordinator, and thankfully for us, we just posted a video comparing all the offensive coordinator candidates, and Cutter was the first one that we had on there, so pat on the back for us. It looks like we were on to something there. But I wanted to go into a little bit more detail about Cutter, his offensive philosophies, what his tendencies are, and how this fits the Bucks' current personnel. Now, as far as his philosophies go, he believes in a strong vertical attack, but he also believes in running the football, too. We didn't see a ton of that in Atlanta post-Michael Turner days, but they're certainly willing to do that, and we saw that back when he was the offensive coordinator in Jacksonville. It just so happened that between the offensive line woes that they had in Atlanta and the fact that they didn't really see much out of Steven Jackson or Kiz Rogers, that they weren't able to do it quite the same way. And then, of course, you had such a strong group of receivers. That's why we saw a little bit more of a vertical attack out of them. Now, as far as tendencies goes, you're going to see a lot of different things from him. He's got a lot of variety in his offense, and again, he matches it well to the personnel. But you're going to see a lot of shifting pre-snap, and they do run some no huddle occasionally to change up the pace just a little bit. And you are going to see a lot of screen passes too, which that's another thing. A lot of people talk about his concept now, which you'll hear a lot more in the coming days, for verticals. That doesn't mean that this is just a vertical passing game. And in fact, if you ask Cutter, he'll tell you it's more of a horizontal attack because the idea here is to stretch the defense in all sorts of ways. And if you watch the tape, you'll notice they're stretching you vertically. They're stretching you horizontally. And the big idea here is to put a lot of strain on those DBs, especially the safeties. And to me, that's what makes the system so difficult to defend is what it's asking the safeties to do. And speaking of DBs, these wide receivers here, I think this system's going to make it a lot easier to do a lot of those back shoulder fades that work so well with having those two big targets on the outside. And this system also gives a lot more responsibilities on the receivers because it's kind of up to them to make some of these adjustments based on the way these DBs are defending them. So depending on cornerback leverage, they could break inside or they could break outside. So it's up to the receivers, actually, to make some of these post-snap reads. Now, I had mentioned four, four verticals. They don't have to line up evenly on each side, and you'll actually see that in some of his play calling. You'll see three receivers lining up over here, and you'll see one over here. That's perfectly fine in his system. Now, as far as personnel goes, my one concern here, my one big concern aside from quarterback is the offensive line. In order for this system to work, you see a lot of five-step drops, and that was actually a staple that you saw with them, with the Falcons. But with an offensive line that can't protect, your quarterback's really not going to be able to drop back and launch some of these deep balls into the air, which is one of the reasons why in this system, instead of receivers breaking 15 to 20 yards, they actually had to move that a lot closer, make that more of 10 to 12. So protection is going to be key, and we didn't see that this past year with the Falcons. Also, too, running backs. They didn't quite have the running backs in Atlanta that they have here in Tampa Bay. They definitely need to get those guys involved, and Lovey Smith has said before he really wants to see a balanced attack. And speaking of balance, if you're going to run the ball, you got to throw it too. And with this being a strong vertical attack, do the Bucks have the same type of personnel to be able to execute this? I know they've got Vincent Jackson. I know they've got Mike Evans. And the fact that Evans, like Jackson, can now line up in the slot too, and he can line up on both sides of the field, that's going to make them more dynamic. And they have Lewis Murphy locked up for a few more years. That's going to be key for them. But they really need that fourth receiver to emerge, much in the way that they had Devin Hester do that for the Falcons. So if they can get those things locked down, this could definitely be something that works. And one thing I will continue to emphasize, and what's really impressed me the most with Cutter, is the fact that he is able to adjust his scheme based on the personnel he's working with. Not every coordinator on both sides of the ball can actually do that. Now another question that's going to be coming up a lot more and more, especially as the draft gets closer, is with this system, who does it fit better? Does it fit a Marcus Mariota, or is it more friendly to Jameis Winston? I'd have to say based on the looks of things, and again, it's still very early on in the process, despite the fact that Cutter has some ties to the people at Oregon, this system favors a guy like Winston, who's that classic drop-back passer who still has some of that athleticism. It favors him a lot more. With Sports Talk Florida, I'm Jenna Lane.